What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at legal problem number 610, Triangle Judgment. This one's marked as easy, has a lot of upvotes and has been asked by Facebook in the past. And Facebook has a bunch of data scientists, data analysts, positions and similar. So this one's interesting. Anyways, let's go through the problem statement together. A pupil Tim gets homework to identify whether three line segments could possibly form a triangle. However, this assignment is very heavy because there are hundreds of records to calculate. Could you help Tim by writing a query to judge whether these three sides can form a triangle? Assuming table triangle holds the length of three sides x, y, and z. We have an example table of x, y, and z and the length of each of these lines. For the sample data above, our query should return the following result. We should create another column or field called triangle, which has no in there if you can form a triangle with these lines and yes if you actually can. Now let's take a moment to actually understand what we're being asked. So we have these x, y and z values. These could be coordinates but apparently they're not. It's just the length of lines that could form a triangle. So we could say this is given in centimeters x is one line which is 13 centimeters then we have a line that is a little bit longer 15 and then a really long line which is 30 and these apparently can't make up a triangle and then we have another triangle possible triangle with x being 10 centimeters y being 20 and z being 15 and these seem to be forming a triangle somehow so this is a little bit of a brain teaser and not just an SQL question, so it doesn't really test the understanding of SQL alone, but also whether you can solve that little riddle or that brain teaser. So it kind of reminds me more of a Python or a lead code algorithm problem, but it's a nice, it's a nice change of pace. So let's go through that thought process and how we actually want to solve that problem. So I prepared this uh, slide environment to draw that up. So let's say we have that case of 10, 20, 15. So we'd have a long line here, which would be 20 centimeters. Another one that would be 10. And then a longer one, which would be 15. So this one would be 15, 10, 20. And these form a triangle, which makes sense. But how do we know they can form a triangle? Basically, we have a long, uh, one side, which is the longest side, and then two shorter sides. Since if we're using that line and bringing it down to the bottom line, it basically these two lines have to be longer than the bottom line. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to connect on a higher level or lower level in this diagram that's missing both axes. But I think it becomes clear if I drag that line, or if I try to lay it down flat on the ground. So it's actually, it's not going to move directly down since it doesn't just go into this direction, but also up. So it's a longer line. It'll go down like this in kind of an angle. Yeah, and it's gonna come out at around here. So it's more than half. This one is also way more than half. It would come down somehow like this. And as you can see, these two lines sum up to more than this bottom line. That's why they're able to form a triangle. If they were shorter than the bottom line together, let's just do that here. That would be the other example of having 30 as the long bottom line and then 15 and 13. 15 and 13 summed up, uh, sum up to 28, which is less than 30. And it, uh, this seems about right. So this could be 30, 15, 13, I guess it's not exactly right, but works as an example. If we try to form a triangle with these, it won't work. How would it work? We'd have to bring it up here somehow, try to keep it very low, 
but yeah, as you're going to move to the side when you're moving up, they're not going to connect. And if they were exactly the same length as the bottom line, then you still wouldn't be able to form a triangle since they would just be lying flat on that bottom line. You wouldn't be able to go up from the bottom line because you would move outwards again. Yeah, and you would be stuck with something like this. So that's the theory behind it. Now we just need to implement that somehow. And yeah, we already solved most of the problem. So let's get into coding that up by selecting x, y, and z, just because that's in the output in the same format as in the input table. I guess the table is called triangle, as it says here. And now we just need to come up with that decision whether it's a triangle or not, giving out yes or no. So since we're able to flip that triangle around and make x, y, or z the base, this condition has to hold for each of these sides. So let's code up each of these conditions and then connect them using AND to express that all of these conditions have to hold. So I'm using if here, you could use case when then. If x plus y is greater than z, that would be, so z would be the longest side and x plus c is greater than y, that would be y as the longest side and y plus c greater than x, that would make x the longest side. If that all holds true, then sorry, then we would put out yes and otherwise no. So for this if statement, you have your condition here. I actually have three and connected them using and. And after the first comma, you would have what happens if that's true. And after the second, what happens if that is false. So if these conditions are true, then we put out yes, it can be a triangle. And otherwise, no, it can't be a triangle. So let's run that to see if it actually works. It does. And once again, we check if two sides are greater than the remaining side. And then we do that for all cases of z being the longest side, y and x being the longest side. If we submit that, it's hopefully accepted as well. You could also do that, change it up a bit, use or in here. and change up the calculation like this, I believe, for all of these cases. Anyways, let's keep it at that. I think it's an interesting problem. Not great because it kind of requires you to understand that brain teaser and that doesn't really show your SQL knowledge, but basic geometry. So, I would choose other problems to ask during an interview, but you could encounter something like that. Apparently it has been asked by Facebook. If you want to see more of these, check out my lead code difficulty playlist on YouTube. So I have three playlists based on easy, medium and hard difficulties on lead code videos like this one. And I also set up a Fiverr page if you want to practice coding interviews with me specifically. So. You can have a mock interview session with me and also have your resume reviewed if you want to, if you book that service through Fiverr. And I think that's a perfect way to prepare for your interviews. Anyways, check it out. I'll leave a link down below for Fiverr and also these lead code playlists. See you next time. Bye.